I'm guilty. Guilty of a cardinal sin of photography. And I suspect that you are guilty as well. Hello, Taylor Jackson, 2007. Hey, it's Taylor Jackson from 2020, giving you a call. Oh, hey, Taylor Jackson, 2020. What's 2020 like? Yeah, it's a pretty normal year. Nothing, nothing really happening. Uh, you, you wearing that stupid Red Bull sweater? Yeah, Red Bull just got an F1 team a couple of years ago. Uh, there's a new guy, L Louise Hamilton. Yeah, yeah, he, he's he's all right. I hear you're having a great day. Yeah, it's a really exciting day. I just picked up my brand new Nikon D300. It'll go nicely with my Nikon D700, which was Nikon's answer to the original Canon 5D. Yeah, I know, I, I lived it. You don't have to give me period specific details. And it's amazing that it just looks like Nikon's just gonna be the, the camera company of the future. They're doing some really, really incredible things. Oh, yeah. We'll get into Sony on a different call, the, uh, the, the PlayStation people. I just wanted to let you know, I know the D300's cool and all, but maybe stop buying cameras on release day. Put that money into Apple and Facebook stocks instead, maybe. And also dump your Blackberry stocks. Well, okay. Anything else happened in 2020 that I should know about? Nothing, nothing really comes to mind. Just a totally normal year. All right, goodbye, Taylor Jackson 2020. Hope you have a good day. Enjoy the D700, D300 combo for, for quite some time. I think we all addicted. Do I need the latest tools to do my job? Or am I just buying cameras for no reason? Let's find out. Let's find out. This here is an Icon D300 from 2007, $100. US in value. And this here is a Nikon 35mm f1.8 DX Prime, also worth about $100. I paid more taxes on my last camera body than this entire kit cost. Oh, you laugh now, but check out this exquisite test frame. Ah, I should have cropped it. It is time for a hard truth. The idea with new gear is generally that it's going to make us become a better photographer, that the reason we haven't made it yet to the next level, it's because technology is holding us back, that if we just had that new Leica within the year, we'd be working for Magnum or getting our first gallery show in New York or whatever your, your dreams are. On some level, technology becomes a scapegoat to why we are not in the place in our career that we want to be. Physically, buying new gear gives us that temporary dopamine hit, the discovery, the chase, the acquisition. It makes us feel really good. Like fast food, you can find temporary comfort in that purchase. The hard truth is that long term, gear is neither going to make you a better photographer or a happier person. But you probably already knew that. So why do we continue to spend money on photography gear when we know this? To find out more, I interviewed this man. He's not a scientist, but he plays one on Facebook. So I'm working on this new documentary, you, you know Big Pharma, right? This one is about the photography industry and it's called Big Sensor. Now, what they don't want you to know is that sensor size doesn't matter and ISO doesn't exist. I'm pretty sure I have a button for it on my camera. No, 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 it's, it's if you change your shutter speed and your f-stop, it's what you're required to change, but it doesn't exist. He then sent me a link to his eight hour lecture at the local community college with Tony Northrup. Back at the shoot, I am really happy with these images. I would happily deliver client work from this $200 kit. As a tool, new gear might make our jobs a bit easier, but it certainly doesn't make us much better photographers. Does my camera technically have to be better than this? For what we're doing today, the answer is no. For what pretty much everyone in the industry does, we don't need anything close to the specs that are being released in 2020. Taking into account the final product for most work, which is now a screen rather than large prints, how many megapixels do you really actually need? I think it's called gear gear lust. Gear lust, gear lust. Gear lust, gear lust. Gear lust, gear lust. Gear lust, gear lust.
To wrap this up, the reason that we're all addicted is because of the unknown. We're all looking for that quick skill gain to rapidly accelerate our skills in photography and from that our reputation in the industry and also to make more money. The more direct way to skills, recognition and money is by doing more work, challenging yourself to get out there and create something worth creating. You don't need expensive new lenses, you just need shoes. There are obviously lots of jobs in photography that will require more than a camera from 2007, but I'm hoping that this video gave you a viewpoint that isn't just go out and buy a new thing to solve your problem. You really don't need $10,000 in gear to create a portfolio that will book you work. In the beginning, I'd much rather be spending that money that I would be spending on gear into experiences that are actually worth photographing. I think that's what a lot of us get wrong. Photography truly is an infinite game and the only shortcut is to get out there and to make more work and make better work than yesterday. There is no path until you walk it and everyone's journey is a little bit different. I'm Taylor Jackson. Thanks for listening. And here's Gear Lust again. Gear Lust, Gear Lust. Gear Lust, Gear Lust. Gear Lust, Gear Lust. Gear Lust, Gear Lust. I've got glass but it's not in the cupboard. Full kit, every focal length is covered New lens, boca, boca, bocao Gear's worth more than my car now Yeah, my luggage holds no clothes Lens caps, I lost them all years ago Could buy a house with all the cash I spent End of the month, I can barely pay 